Okay, in the last video, I painted this skull as a 15 minute speed paint. Let's do another. And we're going to go with this canyon. Ready? 15 minutes on the clock. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. All right, we got 15 minutes. How am I going to paint this? So how would I approach this as a speed paint? The very first thing is I want to get rid of any of the white. So I'm going to fill with uh, a neutral color, pick a background color there. And all right, so this is the art of blur my eyes and pick up the main color. So I see blue in the sky. So let me go ahead and do a kind of a bluish tone across the top. Definitely needs to be more towards cyan and brighter. Um, a little bit of saturation in the top Oops, on the top of the sky itself. Okay, there's atmosphere back here. There's sunlight hitting this side. There's the shadows in here. So I'm gonna try to find that shadow color and this bright color first. So this looks kind of a bluish, well, is it desaturated red, you know, or kind of lean this way? Um, definitely needs to be darker. Let's just get something in here. I think it definitely needs actually a bit more actual purpley blues in it. That is way too saturated. All right, and then the, I'll just go ahead and lean with this kind of purpley color. Wow, it needs to be more blue. Now I'm gonna to try to find the sunlight color on this side, and I think that that is a uh, desaturated, there we go. Let's call that for this, this kind of side. And there's little bits of this that are hitting through over here. It's even brighter and just along the top. And then there's little bits kind of back in this canyon as it wraps around. I need to get some darks in here. I don't want to ever, and I want to get these, these tones as quickly as I can. So there's a, there's a river that wraps through here. There is this sky reflection that's happening here. It's like the sky color, but it's actually more saturated. Um, so I'm going to just paint in some of this. Ooh, it's even more saturated and darker here. Get this dark thing going on along this way. I can, with one brush and one color, I can paint very lightly and it'll help me just kind of like, it's kind of low opacity, just to kind of get these tones in here. Again, blurring my eyes at the whole thing. And I can see the whole picture. Look at the whole picture all together. I've got this really orange thing here. So I'm going to try to find a tone that works for this big blob over here. This kind of frames the image. It's less saturated and a little bit darker. This person is kind of standing. I'm going to lightly paint in some of that color. Ah. Lightly paint in some of this. There's reflected light. So the sunlight comes down, hits this cliff, and bounces off its color temperature. You know, it gets a little bit warmer as it bounces back. So there is this slight warm kind of glow. So I'm going to just kind of lightly paint on top of my blue type colors over here, and it'll help get some of that bounce light. There's also some of that through here. So I'm just going to lightly paint in some complexity of colors through here. Just lightly paint in and Blur my eyes of the whole thing. I can see a dark, very dark spot right here. I need to get this darker. There is, there is some really, really darks through here. Okay, one third of the way through. And it is too saturated in the purples. Kind of like a line right here. Notice I am keeping it super scribbly. So I, want, I need to see the shadows. I want to pay attention to the light, not the thing. 
So the light itself, the sunlight, the darks, try not to see cliffs. Try to see light off these cliffs. This one is not an easy one, by the way. I'm, I tried to pick ones that are more complex than just an egg. You know, something that people could actually see. A lot of you have written and said, hey, what I really want is not a speed paint of, you know, something that you've sped up that took you half an hour and then you don't describe it. I want to see the struggle in this. I want to see the, I want to see what we feel is that pain of like, is this right? Is this the right color here? Is that the right color there? So that's what I'm attempting to do. And yeah, it's not easy. Even though I've done this for a number of years, it always has its challenges. In fact, when I paint with friends, often, you know, I say, all right, this one's going to be an easy one. This one's not that hard. And then I always eat my words. I'm like, no, actually, all of these are, are kind of hard. Okay, there in the background, there is this kind of hazy off in the distance. Yeah, I actually see some purple colors, so I'm going to lean into the purples a bit and paint something here and not go all the way purple, but just like these hills back here. And there is some highlights that are hitting, so I'm going to try the trick of just desaturating and lightening this to see if I can make it look, uh, it does need to lean a bit more to make it look like the red stone. I don't need to pull it all the way around to orange, I just need to get like sunlight onto some of those shapes off and into the distance. What do we think? This is not bright enough, I don't think. I just feel like there's some real hot highlights in this. There is a lot of textural detail through here, but for now I'm just going to scribble because I'm looking at light. I am not looking at rocks. I am not looking at cliffs. I am looking at light and the patterns of light through here and trying to capture this in the 15 minutes that I have. I'm going to go ahead and put this person here too. They have their dark little legs and this bright red kind of jacket. More red. I've got like a pink backpack and I'll just add again just trying to find find as many colors as I can in this 15 minute color study and I see little lines so the, the more I go the more little details I can focus in on. So I can see reflected light. Again, the light sunlight that bounces off this cliff and back onto this wall. And so I'm just going to lean some of these colors in and try to find those forms, those shapes along where that light is bouncing. That is too saturated. Just like on the skull one that I did last, I'm feeling like it's only when I get to this point that I start seeing some of my bigger mistakes in form and shape and I didn't quite get everything right. Also, I feel like this there's more haze back here. So let's lean this. Add a little bit more of that cool back in here. I'm going to make my brush bigger and try my trick of just ever so slightly brushing on. And there are actually some Looks like green stuff that's growing in here. So I'm just going to lean a little more towards cyan and just try, try these tones. See if this looks, I'm not gonna go all the way to green. I just need a little hint of some of these tones through here. The shadow line is pretty dark along here. I think I need mine darker. And there are some oranges in through here. So I'm going to select some of these oranges. The light that bounces all around into these cracks gives some of these tones of red and stripes and there's purple type colors. So I can just kind of desaturate a little bit and add some of that darker rock 
five minutes left. How are we doing? It's starting, if I blur my eyes, this is starting to look like something. Even though it's all scribbly, I'm gonna be impressionistic with it. I'm going to just kind of get the impression. Next thing I see is this really dark shadow here that I don't have in mind. Oop, that was not the right color. Undo, undo. I'm going to select a color I already found before and just desaturate it to make it look a little cooler. Well, that's a tough one. What color is that? I can see little kind of dots, these bigger dots of darker, cool, but there's bounce in there. And so what colors are these? And there's just like little bits of these all over. So I'm just gonna scribble in some stuff and see if I can find that so it feels like the cracks and the noise. Because once I have this, then I can go back and I can clean up. I can make my brush smaller and there's some, actually there's some like reflections in water back here that I haven't captured either. Oh, there's so many details. Didn't get this cliff very well. I made that too dark, didn't I? four minutes remaining. I want lots of cool in these shadows back here. Some of that brighter light is still back there. Lean this a little bit warm. There's lots of scribbling that goes into this process, but it really helps because I can blur my eyes and go, this kind of looks like what I'm what I'm observing. Scribbles. Lots and lots of scribbles. My early artwork when I'm doing original artwork has lots of scribbles in it too because I'm blurring my eyes to try to see does this feel believable and I can always clean up the details and add the little rocks and the texture later. The, the point here is to get the essence of this as quickly as possible. All right, three minutes remaining. Have I captured the essence of this? the right colors in the right places. Not exactly, but hey, this is only 15 minutes. This would be the beginning of a real painting. It's just the first few minutes. If you can do this quick, man, it's gonna go so much better. Instead of spending an hour painting every little crack and every little rock and every little detail, do this and get those first just few minutes in. Man, I promise you, it's gonna make your artwork really excel. You know, your color and light will be so much better if you can let go of the details. That other video that I made a while back, The Art of Unseeing, is, man, it's true. You, when you do these color fast studies, it is even more vital to let go and just see the big forms, the big shapes, and see. All right, there's a little bit on the horizon. I'm gonna clean that up just a hair. Those shapes. Two minutes left. You notice it's always brightest on the horizon because there's more air reflecting sunlight on the horizon than there is on the top of the sky. The top of the sky is the closest you get to seeing deep into space. So it'll always be the darkest part of the sky. Well, I can't say always. Light does all kinds of crazy stuff. So, all right, here we go. One minute remaining and this is, I'm, I'm I'm okay with this. this. This seems all right to me as a quick study. I didn't get the water as nicely as I probably should have. Let's get some of that dark shoreline in here. And let's get some of those. Oh yeah, I really, I need uh, one minute. Let me see if I can clean up some of this water through here. It kind of bleeds and then there's some uh, some sort of desaturated warm reflections into that water. Boy, I really didn't spend enough time on uh, this shoreline. I could, I could have done better with this shoreline, I think. I'm trying to get that kind of contact as it goes around the corner. Yep, definitely could have been better. Could be better. Thirty-five seconds left. I'm gonna get some more saturation, a little bit of darkness into that reflection as I try to blur my eyes and see what I see. Three seconds left. Scribble, scribble. Dark line of the contact of the shore right here. 
last few seconds remaining. I'm realizing the shape of my cliff wasn't quite right, but I'm just going to try to shape out some of those little highlights of the bounce light along through here in the last few seconds. All right, there we go. That is the 15 minute study number two.